Hey everyone, if you've been waiting for my TSL2 retrospective video, sorry, but I just haven't gotten around to finishing it. I promise it will come out sometime soon. I'll try my best to get it done as soon as possible. Anyways, with that out of the way, today's video is going to be about the top 10 best episodes of my country contests, and the top 10 worst episodes of my country contests. We're gonna start with the worst, because best for last, you know what they say. Apologies if this video seems a bit repetitive in some ways, there are some parts where it's several back-to-back -back episodes ranked similarly in quality, but that's just the way it is. Cringe warning, my old work is horrifically bad. I do recommend that if you are under the age of 65, you close your eyes. The Supreme Lands 3, Episode 5, The Mistake. Well, that title is goddamn fitting. I could go on about how TSL3 is not at all a good series, but this video is specifically about episodes, so I will try my best to self-contain it. This episode takes place during the middle of a war between the Superior League and the WDU, and just like most of my old series, it uses the old ceasefire every three seconds format. I've already gone into why I did that, but god it ruins any form of immersion. There's two different fights in this episode that are self-contained despite being part of the world war. Torosima invading the Marine and Union, and the Protector and Vasya conquering Liberation and Zerodon. This already doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't the rest of the powers get involved and help their allies that are fighting on different fronts? But that's not the worst part here. The ultimate trump card for why TSL3 Episode 5 sucks is... What the fuck? Okay, damn, what was I thinking, bruh? First of all, the Protector should not be giving the Imperial Union a vaccine in the first place. They're at war. Secondly, that makes absolutely no sense how they would just casually sail the infected population on a boat and dump them off at Vassia's coast. This is honestly just silly, and I would say this is the greatest episode of all time just for how stupid it is, but seriously, this sucks. This is probably one of the more ridiculous episodes that are going to be in the bottom 10, but from a critical standpoint, it's not as bad as the following entries. Realms of Piara 1 Episode 5, The Fight of the Ages. The dialogue in this episode is so bad. Okay, but besides that issue which is in most of my old videos, the main issue with this episode is Templar Nordica. The episode centers around mainly events that just happen with them or Eumanic, but before that, there is one unrelated event, which is Whitby uniting with Clover. This makes absolutely no sense, because they just fought a war with each other three years ago, and now they're in a union? The worst part is, this isn't the only time that stuff like this happened in an ROP1. But anyways, on to the other flaws. Eumanic breaks up the League of Piara to form a double alliance with the Federate Empire. Nothing really wrong with that, but what comes later is just plain stupid. Templar Nordica tries to invade Sapia to try and spread his ideology. It fails, and now he's severely weakened. Eumanic and Federate try to colonize parts of Tijden and Nosuarus. It succeeds, and now they're much stronger. Then Eumanic decides that Templar Nordica is a threat and launches an invasion. Makes sense, right? No, actually it doesn't make sense at all. Despite being in an alliance, Federate doesn't join to help Eumanic to beat Templar Nordica. That defeats the entire point of an alliance, and to make matters worse, Templar Nordica wins the war. Like, how does that make any sense? Templar Nordica even makes a point of his entire armor being battered, and yet they win without any special strategy. An upset in a war is completely fine, but Federate not joining a no clear strategy for why Templar Nordica wins just makes it dumb. Also, there's the fact that the Vasi Coalition, an alliance specifically made as a defense pact against Templar Nordica, doesn't join either when Eumanic is fighting him. Enough of this, though, we need to move on. The Supreme Lands 1 Episode 2 Uprising. Naturally, TSL 1 being my oldest series is not going to hold up compared to my other series. If I'm not mistaken, this is the shortest country contest episode I have ever made on my channel with the exception of episode 1, clocking in at a whopping 1 minute and 20 seconds. Even shorter than POC 2 episode 9, which is about a single treaty being signed, and Sodar episode 19, which was literally created as a filler episode. The episode's main issue is just the fact that it's so short, and there's absolutely no meaningful events. The state of Erebus in Sangui rebels, but it's crushed pretty easily. After that, the only thing that happens is Zerodon selling an island, and countries talking about some great big war that's coming. It's unnecessary to TSL1 entirely, and it's boring to watch. 
Also, the minimum wage line that Sangui says is just one of the most cringy pieces of dialogue I have ever produced on my channel. But give me a break, I didn't understand economics all that well when I was 13. There isn't even much I can say about this episode, just because of how lacking in content it is. I touched on this in my TSL1 retrospective video, which if you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description, but everything related to Zerodon is extremely contradictory. If you want to know why, well, then just go to the video. Moving on. Number 7 Soil of Destruction Episode 4, All About the Oil on paper, this episode might not seem too bad, but let me dissect it for you. The events themselves aren't that awful, but so much of what's happening is completely unrelated which totally screws up the pacing. One country does this, another country does that, almost nothing intertwines. God damn, I got a Discord DM. The first event of the episode is Tazavalt invading the DIR over a dispute over oil trading. Before this, the DIR was part of Tazavalt's alliance, but he leaves and joins the Gatex Pact, prompting a war between them. In DIR's own words, well, I'm going to get some real allies, I'm joining the Gatex Pact. After doing this, the war is declared, but nobody in the Gatex Pact actually bothers helping him. This is yet another case of an alliance contradicting itself. How is it a military alliance if they aren't helping each other in a war? It's incredibly frustrating how many times I've let these things happen without there being any kind of reasoning behind it. I fixed it in my later series, but come on, this is a no-brainer that alliances are made to unite each other. Soil of Destruction Episode 6, Overwhelming Power Remember during the intro when I said that this list might feel a bit repetitive at times? Well, this is what I mean, because the previous entry, this entry, and the next entry are all three back-to-back -back episodes. Apologies if you're tired of hearing me rant about SOD, but after the next entry there will be a break. Anyways, onto the episode that literally motivated me to quit the series. The beginning of the episode marks the start of a war between two major factions. You may have noticed a theme at this point. Ceasefires. A ceasefire pauses the war almost immediately after starting, and then countries that are currently fighting the war go off and invade other nations that aren't even involved? Like, where is any sort of logic in that? There's also the ridiculous circumstances of Circustan's surrender, and Irodia pulling out of the Gatex Pact immediately, despite just joining it. I'm glad I ended SOD before this could get any worse. Soil of Destruction Episode 5, Betrayal. Don't worry, as I said, this is the last back-to-back -back SOD episode. Number 4 will be something else. Here we have yet another case of the Alliance loophole, where they don't get involved when someone in the Alliance is in a conflict. This doesn't just happen once in the episode, this happens twice. These three episodes are kind of intertwined in how bad they are, there's no real clear frontrunner. But what makes me put this one at the bottom is that it's boring, there isn't any meaningful events. Juldania has a civil war, Azrael falls into a rebellion, and Malrake is kicked out of the Republic's alliance and invaded. The last one is kind of interesting, I guess, but it happens so suddenly that there's no lead up to it, just some dumb excuse for war. But now, we can finally get out of the SOD loop. The Supreme Lands 4 Episode 4, The Sphere. Oh man, the good old days of when I didn't know what the hell a government was. The episode kicks off in the best way possible. Vasya yelling at Protectorate for no reason, and then forming the, get this, Anarchist Order. Yeah, you know how this is gonna go. They proceed to somehow kick the Order's ass, and then Maureen and, and Protectorate do the exact same thing a couple minutes later. In my video where I ranked my country contests, I put TSL4 pretty far down there because of how the Order was so pathetic and not entertaining to watch because you always knew what was gonna happen. The Anarchist Order proceeds to create an alliance called the Vassian Sphere. You know how alliances are, you know, multiple countries, two at least? This is literally just the Anarchist Order. The entire ordeal makes me want to vomit in my mouth watching this episode. The worst part is, unlike most of my cringy events in this list that happen in episodes, the guy who controlled Vasya didn't even ask for the Anarchist Order. I just put it in because, I don't know, it's stupid and I like the flag, but I didn't even know what anarchy was. Before I put a bullet in my brains, let's move on. The Supreme Lands 1 Episode 1, Chain Reaction. Ah, the OG. It would be unfair to rank my first ever time doing something like this, right? No, it's completely fair, it sucks. 
First of all, the dialogue is awful, but that should come as no surprise. The pacing of this episode is terrible, and the wars that happen are for seemingly no reason at all. Again, it was my first time, but I'm not nullifying it to criticism. Way too much happens for its tiny runtime. Things that seem like they'll lead somewhere ending up leading nowhere, and everyone is talking like toddlers. It's like a school assignment that you have five minutes to finish. Not much more needs to be said about this. Soil of Destruction Episode 1, An Era of Destruction. Would you look at that, more SOD. I seriously can't stress how bad SOD is, but I hope this video is giving you an idea. I jumped into the series way too fast after the end of ROP1, and I really wish that I didn't. The organization of the announcement of SOD was such a nightmare, but this is just about the first episode. Maybe I'll talk about that some other time. Just like TSL1's Episode 1, this is so all over the place and way too much happens without any breaks. The entire episode is just in-your-face wars and border changes with no time to relax or comprehend what's going on. The part where Murkoff goes in exile and just bites off a piece of Yorkarthia's land with their permission is honestly comedic in how unrealistic it is. This did not set the tone right for SOD, and clearly it would not get any better. Before I get to number one, here are some dishonorable mentions. The Supreme Lands 3, Episode 3, The Rise of the Superpowers. <sighs> how do I even begin to explain how bad this abomination is? This is genuinely one of the worst things I have created in my life, I wish I was kidding. This episode features the new country of VPQI being formed in the wastelands of the nuclear war, like most other countries in the series. To the creator of VPQI, I am so sorry that this was your first introduction into the series. After that, they check around their borders, and BAM! Seven countries magically form. Why weren't they shown on the map already? Why was VPQI the focus if they weren't the first country in the Northeast to recover? But that's just the start. It gets even worse. The IMGI is reformed into the Imperial Union from Season 2 and does the same thing as VPQI. They expand and find out four other countries that already weren't shown on the map are there. Following this, an alliance is immediately already formed, ruining the aspect of Season 2 being about recovery and just throwing it into the same situation that the TSL world was in before. Rivaling factions back at it again. Not only that, but the Imperial Union starts to experiment with antimatter bombs. Ho oh, ho yeah, we're getting into the big brain stuff here. That's just stupid that they're able to perfect it in a few years after living in the bunkers for a millennium. So unrealistic, so cringy, so boring, and it ruined the course of TSL3. Well, finally we're out of the worst 10 episodes I've ever made. Now onto the part I'm more excited about, the 10 best episodes I've ever made. In no way am I saying that any of the following is perfect content, but I'm perfectly happy with some of the things that I've made. I'm not a genius story writer by any means, so don't try to compare my work to, like, J.R.R. Tolkien. Plans of Corruption 2 Episode 4, Fully Confident. The beginning of this episode is really nothing special, just has normal POC vibes to it. The strength of this episode really comes in the last event of the episode, the war between Aerolassia and Lapivian versus Hydra and Aradia. I don't know, I really have a liking for long wars that aren't just world wars like we see in every series of mine. This war starts with Lapivian and Aerolassia winning on most fronts against the obviously weaker nations, but then they begin to fight back and push pretty far into the enemy's territory. By the end of this episode, both countries are on a pretty even playing field, with gains and losses everywhere. This episode isn't anything spectacular, but I find this conflict to be one of my favorites. Most wars don't extend into multiple episodes unless they're world wars, but this one does, and even in episode 5 the fighting continues for a while. Anyways, this is just number 10, so we can get even better. Soil of Destruction Reboot Episode 6, Escape from Hostalian. This is another one of those episodes with a war that isn't a world war, but spans multiple episodes. Not only that, 
But like most of the SODR episodes, there's lore happening outside of the map. This episode is all kinds of fun, but let me break it down. In the beginning animation, the protagonists of Alex and Katie are informed that Sertek knows what they're up to, and they need to flee the country to avoid being captured. This effectively puts a splice on the SODR story, like it's entering a new act. Cutting back to what's happening on the map, a continental war breaks out. Unlike the dry world wars that always happen, there isn't actually any formal alliances that spawn the war. Most countries that join are doing so because of the circumstances, except for the informal alliance between Galfor, Tenoral, and Jalisco. The conflict is back and forth, every front with the defender winning battles and the attacker winning battles. The only reason that this episode isn't higher is because the alliance loophole is unfortunately present. Varenth joins the war against Galfor, but the rest of the Sentinel Pact doesn't, even when he's invaded. This may have been my choice, I don't really remember, or maybe it was the player's choice. Either way, this is still an entertaining episode. Soil of Destruction Reboot Episode 14, The Wastelands. This one might surprise you, because the focus of this episode is not war. In fact, it's the exact opposite. A lot of the time, a world war ends the series, but SODR was going to continue until episode 20. That was what I'd scheduled long before this episode. Usually, an episode like this would just be filler, or other meaningless side conflicts that happen around the planet. But no, this one was about actions having consequences. It's 1975, and the Allies just defeated the Intercons, but the former Alliance's troubles are far from over. Two of the Northern Allies, Silber, Vitar, and Sidan, completely collapse. The amount of resources they spent on the war was beyond the nation's capabilities, and Skyhawk steps up to the task of reorganizing the land. Animosity already starts to form when Arav doesn't get any land from the dead country, pitting her against Skyhawk early. Not only that, but a multiple-sided civil war breaks out in Avelia because the government became unpopular when they abandoned the country despite winning the war altogether. Besides the mapping, the episode does have important lore in it, too. The alliance of Alex, Katie, Barry, and Wesley are able to trick Sertek into falling for a trap, which officially incriminates Sertek. Now the Hostalian government knows what they're really up to and that they're a threat. The episode serves as a nice bridge after the World War, and the start of a new brewing conflict that would come years later. Planes of Corruption 3 Episode 4 Double Sided. It's 1922, and the World War is heating up significantly. Merxy and the Axis are losing ground, but are still fighting back and hard and fast. This episode is just war, nothing but war, and that's what makes it good. You'd think that it would be boring if it's just one thing, but the dialogue is constant and it's actually interesting to watch. Frontlines aren't just moving randomly, the countries are discussing strategy all the time. Also, this was when I showed boats traveling across the map to signify reinforcements or supplies, but nothing major, but a nice addition. Merxy may be losing, but they are fighting back well. As I said, Merxy is what the Order should have always been. There isn't much more to say about this episode, it's just an upbeat fight to the death that, unlike older World Wars, is nicely paced. Planes of Corruption 2 Episode 7, Daenerys. This episode is another one that takes us into the heat of war, but this time it's Merxy who will end up triumphing. The war doesn't end this episode, but the Allies suffer a massive blow, with the entire continent of Daenerys falling into Ernian, Donica, and Ulstrigan's hands. One thing that makes me like this episode more as well is the affair with the Terracosians. Merxy asks the Terracosians to rebel from Lepivian, and their country would finally be restored after several years. However, Terracos does not comply, and stands firmly with Lepivian, which would ultimately lead to the residents of their biggest city being massacred. This episode serves as a kind of foreshadowing for what's to come, but it's not outright said, and a comeback is still possible considering what happened in the last World War. I like this episode a lot, it sets the tone right by slowly chipping away at the Allies' hope. Realms of Piara 2 Episode 9, The Final Battle. This is one of only two country contest episodes that's completely and 100% animation. 
I'll admit, the dialogue is not the greatest in this episode, but I still absolutely love this video. First of all, the music. Oh my god, there's no songs in the world that would have fit the tone better than the ones that I selected. The fight between the Overseer and Asigrius might be slow to some, but I thought that it was really unique with how it was just a bunch of frames fading into each other with fire in the background changing color. Obviously, the palace was not on fire. This was just done for aesthetics to set the battle as something that is beyond just humans fighting. Same reason for why I made the country balls more abstract looking. If I could go back and change anything about this episode, I wouldn't, other than maybe just small visual details like the blood and the beams shooting out of the god staffs. If only mapping without animation is your thing, then fine, this episode might not be for you. But if you like story elements, this is perfect. Soil of Destruction Reboot Episode 20, The Red Sky. This is the other episode that is entirely animation based. Fun fact, this episode was the hardest to make. It took so long and it was the most tiring, but I'm extremely satisfied with the final product. Nine minutes of straight animation without any breaks is no joke. I remember the day that this came out. I planned it for the exact one year anniversary of SODR. I was working from as soon as I woke up until late in the evening. The only break I took was five minutes for dinner. I worked on the episode before that day, but I had a long way to go. Doing animation is really tough. This is, without a doubt, the episode I am the most proud of in terms of visual quality. When it comes to its content, the protagonists have to save the world from the Strazer superweapon burning the surface of the planet off. The dialogue is good, the animation is good, and everything about this episode is good compared to my typical quality. In the end, Alex dies trying to defeat Lance, the leader of the operation, but Katie is able to kill him after getting shot twice, but she must make a sacrifice and die with the space station. The reason why it isn't number one is just because I think that there are episodes that include more content-wise. I certainly think that this was the best way I could have ended my Country Contest saga. After this episode released, I got in a call with my server to hear their reactions to the episode. I was so happy that they were all as satisfied with the episode as I was. Immediately after, I even started crying. The journey was finally over. I remember getting in my car and driving to the mountains some 120 kilometers away from my house just to spend the rest of the night in peace. My life honestly changed that day, and I felt it as soon as it happened. Putting personal feelings aside though, I think this episode is without a doubt one of the most entertaining things I've ever uploaded. Soil of Destruction Reboot Episode 18, The Crossroads of Destiny. Oh yeah, if you're an Avatar fan, that episode title will sound very familiar to you. This episode is a jack of all trades, with the start and finish of a war taking place through the entire thing, and an animation at the end. Unlike the other episodes that take place in the middle of a world war that I listed before, this one is entirely self-contained. The start and finish of the war are all in this episode. Another reason that this episode is so high on this list is because the conflict is extremely long, with lots of dialogue discussing what's going on, and TWO visible naval battles. I mean, come on, how could you not love that? Naval battles aren't usually something that I show, so having two of them in this episode alone I knew would make it a good one. In the end, Tavuya sucks up his pride and joins the allies, helping them win the war. This was really the last true mapping episode I made. Episode 19 was just filler with no wars in itself, and episode 20 was only animation, as I discussed before. I think that this was a nice way to wrap up political conflicts in the series. Planes of Corruption 3 Episode 6, The End of Time. This honestly shouldn't come as much of a surprise to you who've seen my Country Contests Ranked video, because Planes of Corruption 3 was at the top. This episode is just... there. That's all I can say, it's just there. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it, you will not regret it. Skip the credits if you like. Merxy is on his last legs here. Ernian and Karmar surrender shortly after the beginning of the episode. And yet, despite this, Merxy continues to fight, even pushing the allies back significantly. And the song that plays when it happens is just... Ugh. In the end, Merxy loses, but as I've said before, Merxy was exactly what the order from TSL4 should have been. They rule the world, but they don't fold so fast. They fight back, they win, they turn the tides back and forth. I love POC3 so much, and this episode is just the icing on the cake. The plot twist at the end with Ricardo Juarez having a son is also one of my favorite parts. 
Before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions. Realms of Piara 2 Episode 8, Rest. The episode picks up immediately after the death of Piara, and the Overseer is trampling the world with the possessed army. In the end, the most the Coalition are able to do is slow down the army. They are no match for the Onslaught. No matter what they try, it's hopeless, and it ends with the world being swallowed whole. Temi has been executed, Piara and Pastopia are dead, and Isigrius has fled. Truly, it's hopeless, but as we know, Isigrius returns the next episode and kills the Overseer. But the episode ends with a cliffhanger. The world has been lost as they know it. The thing that really gets me about this episode is how all of the remaining countries who've held out in their capitals are saying goodbye to each other. They know their fate is inevitable. Even when the screen fades to complete darkness, Templar sends one last message of help. But of course, there is no answer. The world is shrouded in complete darkness. That's another thing that I love about this episode. The screen fading darker and darker isn't easily noticeable at first, until you realize that the Overseer is going to win. The power of this episode is what makes me believe that this is the greatest video that I have ever made. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took a bit of time to rank all of these episodes. If you'd like, comment your favorite and least favorite country contest episodes. I'm interested to see if you guys agree with parts of my list. That's it for this video. See y'all around.